The views expressed by the host of this podcast are not opinion-based. They are actually facts and truth, no matter if other people like it or not. It is the Detroit sports truth, and nothing can ever stop it from being correct. Hey there, Detroit sports fanatics, and welcome to episode 172 of the Detroit sports truth on Spreaker. Today we're going to talk about the Red Wings and why they should not trade Timu Palkinen and Andre Drummond making a decision that he will wait until next offseason to re-sign with the Pistons. Now, this got me riled up here. I found an article this morning, late this morning, that uh, from Jack Mullen of Fansided's Octopus Thrower. Jack Mullen claims in this article that he's the master of hot takes. And he headlines in this article, Bold Opinion, colon, Detroit Red Wings should trade Timu Polkanen? Well, first off, let me read what he had to say. He, well, he, he, he said, quote, I don't necessarily recant my hype about the Finnish winger from Finland. In the past, he called uh, Polkan in the next Brett Hall a hyperbole, of course, but nonetheless an honest expression of excitement. Mullen imagined a dream aligned with Polkanen beside Anthony Mantha and Andreas Anthanasiu. Under circumstances, Polkanen is an electrifying player. He possesses an, an incredibly fast, hard, and accurate shot, and he dominated the AHL last year with 34 goals and 27 assists in just 46 games. However, Mullen has difficulty seeing Polkanen sustained success from the AHL to the NHL. Polkanen has a great shot, but that's about it, his only noteworthy skill. He's tiny, standing at 5'11", 180, 180 pound, 185 pounds. 5'11 is actually not tiny, Mullen. I mean, that's another, that's one of the things that's not accurate. You are crazy! Oh, oh, I get it! You're you're crazy. Are you crazy? Second. Uh, next off, in the AHL, the nature of the league afforded players extra time and space that doesn't exist at the next level. Combined with a lesser talent at the opposing end of the rink, Polkanen was able to tear through the AHL by exploiting those traits. In the NHL, when Polkanen doesn't have the puck in a shooting lane, he is rather... He is a rather insignificant player. Well, that that's a bit downgrade. That's a bit too downgrading there, by uh, Mullen. Because my point is, first off, first and foremost, that Polkinen is a young guy from the AHL last season. And he just needs more time to develop. And to downgrade him like that, for example, is just harsh. My my point about it is I'm reading, I'm trying to read, uh, I'm actually reading inside Jack Mullen's head that the Wings should trade Polkanen for yet another used-up, washed-up, over-the-hill veteran that that it is uh, that is already at the tail end of his career. You're f***ing crazy! Oh, oh, I get it! You're f***ing crazy! You're f***ing crazy! Are you f***ing crazy? No, we're not going to go that road. We're not going to go down that road anymore. 
This is not the Mike Babcock era anymore, Jack Mullen. Let me continue on here. Polkinen has a first-class shot, but everything else in his game is low-grade. Is it too early to give up? If you have a roster where you can have a play, where you can place a player in position where you where it would capitalize on his only valuable skill, then it is too early. If the Wings could put Polkinen on the wing with Zetterberg and Abelkader, keeping him would be justifiable. Well, there's one point that's valid. Zetterberg is an elite center whose whose playmaking skills can give Timu the puck. While Abdo, while Ablocator is a big-bodied power forward who can open up space and provide a screen, but you can't put Polkinen on this line without displacing other talents who would serve the line better with a more complete game. See Larkin, Nyquist, etc. Et See, that's that's another confusing part here. First, Mullen points out that that if the Wings could could put Polkin on the wing. Poking it on the wing with Zetterberg and Ablocator, keeping him would be justifiable. And then he points out that you can't put Polkinen on, on the Zetterberg Ablocator line without displacing other talents who would serve the line better with a more complete game. Like like Larkin and Nyquist. Uh, okay, I yeah, I think I think it does make sense. Uh, Larkin was already on the first line, so was Nyquist. I, well, maybe not. I don't know. Uh, Nyquist uh, was probably like either on the second or third line. But continuing on here, but uh, Abdo K, uh Polkinen is not that bad. He's 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 already developing, and I'll, I'll explain I'll explain my reasons after I read this. Detroit has a total logjam on offense that will become even more congested as early as next season. Ken Holland needs to move bodies in order to be able to put to be able to bring in other yelling, bring in other young talents like Mantha, Anthony Siu, and Tyler Bertuzzi in the coming seasons. Polkinen would probably earn the Wings a better return in a trade that any other current roster player, that is, any player th who would likely be traded, such as Yurko or Tomas Yurko or Darren Helm, Andreas Antonisio and Anthony Mantha, were their first names. Well, f well, first, well, let me mention Darren Helm. The Wings cannot trade, trade Darren Helm. They need him. He's not. It, he he looks tradable because of his speed, and he's, and he's been injury prone. Don't get me wrong, but the wings need more speed. The wings need that speed, that skating speed, and, and the aggressiveness of Darren Helm. Without it, their power play and penalty killing unit. Would not improve. I'm not sure about Yurko, though. I'm kind of 50 50 on that one. But uh, I still think Yurko could develop better under Jeff, under head coach Jeff Blaschel. So you got to give him time, too. Moving on, I can't imagine what. The return could be, but based on last year's trade deadline market, I could see a second round pick and maybe a decent prospect, decent prospect coming back. Timu hasn't produced an, produced enough to earn a first rounder, but he's not trash at the curb either. The Capitals, the Washington Capitals, gave Calgary picks from rounds two and three for Curtis Glencross. who just retired after being released from two pro tryouts. 
it seems as if general managers in today's NHL love to overpay so we can dream for a decent return. So what do you think? Would moving Polkinen be an asinine decision, or is he the best option to deport in order to open up roster space? I, I, I definitely I definitely think that's very asinine, Jack Mullen. Because and I have four reasons for it. Jack, you're saying let's just trade Polkin in. For what? Uh, I'm not you're not even sure wh what you're talking about. Number two. The Red Wings don't really need any more talent or prospects at the moment. They are they are loaded with young talent already. They would need a veteran defenseman with with some prime years left, not a veteran that's already at the t tail end of his career. Number three, Mullen, you mentioned that 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 you don't see Polkin in sustaining su success from the AHL to the NHL which means Polkinen still needs more time to develop in the AHL instead of the NHL, so he's not tradable. And number four, Polkinen already has scored three goals this season, which is not as bad as Mullen thinks. It's mathematically better than Tomas Tatar's two assists thus far, and better than Brad Richards to assist thus far. Polkinen is ranked six on this team in total points with three of them on all of his three goals. I don't even know who they should trade, to be honest with you. If that trade possibility involving Polkinen is considered a possibility, it just won't work in any way, shape, or form. I'm sorry. Now, I, I commented it on it and called it another garbage article. I, I didn't, and I'm sorry I didn't explain why. But uh, Gwen, I think, is, J is Jack's boss, commented and thought, and, and thought that I was hating on Jack just for calling him an idiot for his totally dumb article. Then I explained why afterwards. But I don't know if Gwen is Jack's boss or why, but... But, uh... But, uh, what a crybaby she, she is. You're just a crybaby! A coward! Gwen is apparently defending Jack Mullen's opinion that the wing should trade Polkinen. Once again, I, I just ex I just explained those to you people. To you two people, Gwen and Jack. If you two think Polkinen should be traded, you can kiss everybody else's asses. You can kiss all Red Wing fans' asses for um, coming up with a crazy concept like that. Polkinen, if you think Polkinen needs more developing, then you shouldn't even consider opinionating that Polkinen should be traded. That's the most confusing part. Besides, Polkinen is not that bad. Three goals! You think that's not enough? The Wings are only five games into this regular season. That's reason number five.
that's a fifth reason why this 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 article opinion article from Jack Mullen is so dumb. It's a bunch of bull crap. A bunch of horse manure. I want to uh, remind you that this podcast is uh, is not not intentionally for entertainment for entertainment purposes, and is not supposed to entertain anyone. It is supposed to tell facts. Uh, it is supposed to educate the Detroit sports fans and and tell them what they what they really need to know. It it is not opinion based. It is the truth. That's the other thing I wanted to mention about this podcast. Uh, so uh, the Red Wings take on the Oilers tonight in Edmonton at Rexall Place. <laughs> they will take on first overall draft, uh, first round draft pick Connor McDavid, and the Edmonton Oilers. He's one of the players to watch. Also. Taylor Hall, Yakupov. Let me look at the Oilers roster here. Going to Oilers.com. Jordan Eberle is put on the put on injured reserve. So is Matt Hendricks, the left winger. Jordan Eberle Jordan Eberle is uh, right winger. They also got left, but but they do on the active roster. They have Rob, Rob Klinkhammer. Andrew Ferentz, the former Calgary Flame. Andrew Miller. Mark Latestu, the former Columbus Blue Jacket. Ryan Nugent Hopkins, the center. Benoit Pouliot. Neil Yakupov. Teddy Purcell. Anton Slepyshev. Andre Sekera, Justin Schultz, on defense, Griffin Reinhardt, Oscar Kleffbaum, Eric Greiba, Mark Fain, and Brandon Davidson. Cam Talbot is the number one goaltender for the Edmonton Oilers. I expect him to start. They also got backup goaltender Anders Nielsen at six foot five, weighing two hundred twenty nine pounds. It'll be it'll be Cam Talbot, Cam Talbot, and, and Peter Morazic going at it tonight. That game starts at nine thirty at Rexall Place, and it'll be televised on Fox Sports Detroit. And on the radio on 97.1 The Ticket, WXYT FM HD1 Detroit. And in Southfield and on the Red Wings radio network with Ken Cal and Paul Woods. Ken Daniels and Mickey Redman, or Ken Daniels and Chris Osgood, rather, calling the game.
the Wings have tomorrow off, uh, have Thursday off, and then go to Calgary Friday. Jimmy Howard will take on Jonas Hiller there. So, why don't we go ahead and move on to the Pistons? And Rashid from long range. Oh! Yes! 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 Oh! yes! 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 Left side line free, and he answers. The some Pistons news here. From yesterday, center Andre Drummond will wait until next summer to re-sign with the Pistons. He will become a restricted free agent. He will become a he will he will become a restricted free agent on November second, the same day Ryan Schuling will return to his show, The Schuling Report, on the Team ninety two one FM WQTX in Lansing. That's a good thing for the Pistons because it's better. For them to have him as a restricted free agent, than having than having him as an unrestricted free agent, which means he'll sign anywhere he wants. A restricted free agent is his contract is up, but he's he's still locked in with he he's still locked with the team, And they need Drummond to be their total rebounder and shot blocker. They need him to continue to do to do that. Back to the Wings and Oilers. The Oilers are two and four, and oh, Wings are three two and oh. Fifth in the Pacific Division. Back to the back to the Pistons here. Drummond is that next Ben Wallace type force the Pistons need to keep their going-to-work culture going to help them bring not only NBA playoffs appearances, but also championships like Central Division Championships, Eastern Conference Championships, and maybe NBA Championships as well. The team is also missing Brandon Jennings, and they need him to stay too. He was the ultimate offensive juggernaut to their comeback before he suffered his torn ACL for the rest of the season. Well, they, they need both Drummond and Jennings to stay. But they just need to uh, figure out the payroll to do that. It, it it might be tough. But but ESPN still picks the Pistons to finish 11th in the conference normally because they think they've never improved. This isn't the Jock this isn't the, this isn't the Josh Smith era to, this isn't the Josh Smith era anymore. Smith was already claimed waivers at the dying days of last December by the Houston Rockets, and both the Pistons and Rockets have rolled on since then. When the Pistons get Jennings back, which will possibly be by Christmas Day, they will be rolling again, and they will be way better than 11th place, and they will make the playoffs next calendar, next calendar year this season. Jennings had better get uh, Jennings had better not get her uh, Jennings had better not get injured at all again. Period. Do I make myself clear? The Pistons continue their preseason at the Palace of Auburn Hills against the Charlotte Hornets, and then they take on the Atlanta Hawks in preseason action Friday at 7 30. You can catch all Pistons preseason and regular season games and postseason games, if they make it, on Detroit Sports 105.1 WMGC FM HD1 Detroit on the, and on the Detroit Sports 105.1 mobile app and on TuneIn Radio Pro mobile app. For uh, 97.1 The Ticket, you can download the CBS local app, go to Detroit, you'll find it there. I almost forgot to mention that. You, you can both you can find both Detroit Sports 1051 and 971 the ticket on TuneIn Radio as well, but but uh, the Red Wings games are copyright protected by the National Hockey League and 
and may and thus may not be streamed anywhere online but NHL Game Center and NHL.com. But the NBA does allow Pistons games to be streamed on its flagship affiliates mobile app and online stream. Go to DetroitSports1051.com additionally to and and log into your log into your account or create one to listen live. So that wraps up episode 172 on the Detroit Sports Truth. I'm Taylor Phillips. If there's anything you fans want more or less of on my podcast, please let me know. TTFN talk to for now. Sorry, no sounders today. The wrap up.